how you doing? How you feeling? Welcome to this week's episode of Search and Report. I'm your host, True Fernie. And welcome to a very, very late episode of Search and Report. I've been, I'm not even going to get into the whole um, discussion regarding my life right now, but um, I will say I did post on my Discord ch- uh, server that I'm going to limit uh, my videos both the uh, podcast and the scripted videos to one video a week that does include the podcast um you know as much as i'm, I'm gonna be re- i'm gonna be really really real with you like I'm, I'm being completely honest right now i don't have the time i don't have a, a lot of the time that i want to invest that i wish i could invest into the videos into the podcast um every week work has been crazy hectic and you know i gotta pay the bills and unfortunately as much as i wish it did youtube streaming don't pay the bills so i'm limiting the videos that i put up to my channel my youtube channel any kind of content to one once a week i'm gonna stick to that um you have my word um as well with some stream sprinkled on here and there um like i said it, it's uh it's been crazy hectic but at the same time i don't want to keep on making excuses for myself so that's why i decided to uh, limit at least the uh, the amount of videos that I put out every week. I, I I used to do two two videos a week, including the podcast. So um, it's just it's not sustainable, and I want to keep doing this as long as I can. And I got to think about my mentals. I got to think about my social life. I got to think about my um, personal relationships and stuff like that. So um, I do still appreciate everyone who still watches these things, these videos, listens to the podcast, um, everywhere that you might interact with me i do really appreciate it and uh it's been a crazy couple of years uh creating content and uh i don't think i'm ever gonna stop so there you have it don't worry i'm just cutting back a little bit but folks uh how you doing how you feeling welcome to this week's episode of search and report i already said that i don't know why i'm repeating myself um without further ado let's get straight into the show so for our first section which i love to call is what have i been playing if you're a fan if you're a, a viewer of the streams over on twitch.tv slash you would know that i finally accomplished the impossible which is finally beating skyward sword hd i hate that game it is it is it is the worst zelda game in my opinion ever it's 3d zelda game not not across the whole board because there's some pretty bad 2d zelda games um there's only one actually <laughs> but uh, I'm a big Zelda fan, and for me to dislike a Zelda game, it has to be—I mean, it has to be bad. It has to really, really be bad because I am from the camp that absolutely loves games such as Twilight Princess, games such as uh, Wind Waker, uh, games such as Ocarina of Time. Although overrated, I did tweet out yesterday that Ocarina of Time is pretty overrated, and it is. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but my favorite 3D Zelda game of all time has and will always be Majora's Mask. So I'm a big fan of 3D Zelda games. That's what got me into gaming. But Skyward Sword, man, I, I, just, I don't know, man. I tried to be as objective as possible when I bought Skyward Sword HD, but I just cannot. I can. It was such a drag beating that game. However, I do want to talk about the goods um, now that I beat the the game. Now I feel like I can, I can talk a little bit more about the game, even though it's been out for over over a month. Um, the goods uh, for this game are, of course, you know the enhancements, all the visual enhancements, 60 FPS, amazing. Uh, the controller scheme now you don't have to necessarily play the game with motion controls. Obviously, if you're playing on a Switch Lite, you can still play the game by just using your right uh, joystick um it is it is that that was a huge deal for me i i i I am not a big fan of motion controls as pretty much 90 percent of the population of the world so again when they said that they announced this game was only going to be uh wasn't only going to be motion controls i was like damn finally finally i can finally enjoy a 3d zelda game the way it's meant to be enjoyed um, even though it took me a little bit to get used to with the controllers, especially with the swing of the sword, because as you know, Skyward Sword HD was designed with the uh, sword gameplay um, as the main focus for the whole game. Like motion controls was the reason for why this game was created. I mean, you can't 
beat the game with if if you don't play motion with motion controls um you know when it was released on the wii um but you know that's a good enhancement that they gave for the switch version and i do appreciate it it took a little bit of of getting used to but it, it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad i think the most annoying thing was the camera you know you having to press down uh the zl button and then you, you so so then you would be able to use the right joystick to control the camera because without holding down that button the, the right control stick uh joystick is you know how you slash and dice with your sword if you flick it to the right link is going to flick to the right he's going to swing to the right if you flick it down he's going to flick the sword down and etc cetera, etc cetera. so um that did get a little bit you know getting used to it but it, it wasn't it wasn't that difficult i would say if i if i was able to pick it up you'd be able to pick it up pretty easily um of course you can also skip cutscenes, which that is one of the biggest complaints that i had with the game when it first released it's such a drag the story man i'll get more into the story as why i think it's such a drag but the story the cutscenes, was like it's just if you ever wanted to replay this game i mean it's it's you know it, it had the old school design mentality of you need to listen to the story you need to watch the story like it doesn't matter if you already played the game twice like you still gotta watch these cutscenes. so the enhancement um you know you being able to skip cutscenes in the switch version amazing great even though i didn't skip a single cutscene, still great fee she is muted she is brought down to earth she has been finally taught about social cues and how people do not like her <laughs> or or it i think she's i think fee is a she i don't know i'm not too sure but um just just the the idea and and just the the, the fact that you can you can basically make fee an optional part of the game is just amazing to me man if you played the wii version you would understand just how annoying and in the way she can get and and so um just just being just having her as part of the as a companion that is always there in case you need her is great and she's not always interrupting you except for cutscenes but besides that man the 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 way that nintendo approached the the remake or the remaster i should say it's not really a remake uh, of Skyward Sword HD is just great. I, I think I think they did a great job. HD graphics, of course. Um, everything looks beautiful. This game from the Wii version it looks beautiful. It looked a little bit blurry in the Wii version because of the the, uh, the resolution. But in this game, everything looks beautiful. Everything looks crisp. I like the art style. Um, it's a little bit too pastel-y for my taste. I like a little bit more darker uh, Zelda games like Twilight Princess. Um, but it is a beautiful game. I will say it is a visually pleasing game and the hd upgrade is definitely a, a huge plus for this game and of course the soundtrack but again the soundtrack didn't change much from the original version it's always been a great soundtrack skyward sword hd has one of the best soundtracks in the zelda franchise but now the bad bad man fundamental things fundamental things such as the story believe me man I'm a huge fan of Zelda stories, even though they're basic as hell. They're vanilla as hell. Save the princess and just go on about your day and, and become the hero of Hyrule. It's basic as hell. But at the same time, Jesus Christ, man. The, the story in this game is such a drag. Of course, it is the first game uh, chrono in chronological order of the whole Zelda franchise. So I understand why there was a lot of... Uh, um, just build up for the whole story and they got to repeat and kind of like really really drive to the point that you know this is the first zelda this is how hyrule came to be this is the creation of hyrule so they do drive hard on the story side of things but it becomes a drag pretty fast because they repeat constantly elements of the story where you're like please leave some stuff to the imagination man like seriously they just drive too much to the point that, hey, this is how Hyrule was created. This is how the Master Sword is being created and stuff. So um, that is that is mostly one of the biggest bats or biggest uh, uh, issues for me for this game. And also game design. Just, just the process of you going through the game is such the, a drag, much like the story, because... 
the amount of times they recycle areas for this game is is amazing to me man you, you have to revisit spoiler alert you have to revisit each area at least twice to beat the game and they recycle areas um not no not so much dungeons but i mean kind of there's one dungeon that you have to revisit twice um and you're like why am i having to repeat this whole process again I already went through the whole process of beating the temple. I don't want to be back here. There's no reason for me to back, be back here. So that that really drags on the game for me. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I don't like Skyward Sword at all. Like, it, it's just design-wise, it's not one of my favorite. It's not my favorite. It's my least favorite 3D Zelda game of all time. So um, it's, it's, it's below Wind Waker, much for the same reason that Wind Waker also... It's a lot of backtracking and it's a lot of revisiting areas that you already beat and you're like okay why do i have to keep going back to this place i want to explore i want to look at new stuff new things so that's that's one of the main reasons why i did not i do not like skyward sword at all it, i just don't like the game i don't like replaying it it's beautiful i'll listen to the music non-stop i'll watch i don't know a two-hour video of just skyloft but that's it like i don't think i'll ever replay this game ever again but at the same time never say never all in all i like this game if you're a big zelda fan go ahead and buy it go ahead and play it um try and get buy it at walmart because they usually sell switch games at a discount and like i said one of the other big bad things that i don't like about skyward sword hd this remaster is the price they're selling it at 60 dollars when the wii version when it released back in the day if I'm not mistaken, it was $50 or less, and it came with a bunch of more things. So there's no reason for them to be charging $60 for what is essentially a remaster of a $40, $50 game. Like, I don't know about that, man. But all in all, I'm glad I beat that game. I'm done with it. Um, and right now, I'm just going now through my backlog of games. Um, playing Red Dead Redemption 2, again, another slow-ass game. What is it with open-world games just being slow as fuck, man? I just want to get into the meat of things. And I'm honestly, I much prefer the first Red Dead Redemption. As far as story and pacing, it is just a way better game at storytelling. Red Dead Redemption 2 is too slow for my taste. I'm still going to beat it. I'm still going to beat that game. Don't doesn't matter how long it takes me, but I'm still... It, it just feels like a drag sometimes. I just play it whenever I have nothing else to play. Um, and I'm also playing Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, which I am amazingly enjoying a lot. Um, of course, I did start playing Pokemon, you know, in the first generation when it actually came out for the Game Boy. Like, that's how I started my Pokemon, po Pokemon, <laughs> my Pokemon journey, and it, I didn't expect uh, to like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu a lot because of the capture mechanics, the battle mechanics. But at the same time, I don't mind them at all. I don't. I'm not a big fan of random encounters. So this being one of the first few games where you can actually see the Pokemon in the wild areas and in the tall grass, and you know, you choosing whether to interact with them or not such a such a huge plus for me i just love that i love that i'm a big fan of that and i'm enjoying the let's go pikachu graphics it looks beautiful um they really did a really good job with uh recreating um the first pokemon generation for the switch it's just a beautiful game i cannot recommend it enough it's such a good game for new fans and for veterans of the, the series like it's, it's such a great game but at the same time why am i talking about a, a three-year-old game i don't know man but without further ado, let's get straight into the first news item of the week. Let's talk about the Sony's PlayStation Showcase. We got today. Today is September 9th, um, and a few hours before recording this, Sony did finally um, did their presentation, their PlayStation Showcase, uh, where they did drop a lot of really exciting stuff, really, really exciting stuff of uh, coming up for the P uh, PlayStation, specifically the PlayStation 5. Um, here, The Verge uh, summarized the PlayStation Showcase in a neat little article. Um, we got a lot of announcements, and I'm so excited to just be able to play a lot of these things. Um, first and foremost, we're getting Knights of the Old Republic. It's getting a next-gen remake. I never got to play this game. I've heard nothing but good things about uh, Kings of the Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, 
Knights of the Old Republic and hearing that it's coming to the PS5 and getting a next gen remake makes me very, very happy. I mean, I know this is basically turned into a classic for a lot of RPG fans, so I'm definitely going to be getting this game. It looks like, it, I mean, they only showed a CGI um, trailer for the game, but I'm so excited. Like, if, if there's anything that I've heard about this game, it's nothing but good stuff. So, I am excited. We still don't know when it's coming out for the uh, PS5, but all if you're a huge Knights of the Old Republic fan, be on the lookout because the PS5 is getting a version. Um, we're also getting Marvel Spider-Man 2, the sequel to Marvel Spider-Man that came out for the PS4. Insomniac man, man, Insomniac Games has been killing it, man. They are carrying the PS5 on their backs. Seriously, I cannot con uh, commend insomnia games any anymore because they're basically the sony studio they're the ones carrying the ps5 they're the ones giving me a reason to have a ps5 this little old thing over here in the back you're watching the video version like seriously man the the amount of stuff they've been putting out over the past four or five years is just great it's 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 really well made it, it's quality games and I think they are one of the few developers that I would gladly pay $70 for their games because they're just that good. They're really well polished and they're on the top of their game, man. The, the, every single game they put out is just amazing so far. So I'm really excited to see what Marvel's uh, uh, Spider-Man 2 has in store for us. Um, we only got a CGI trailer for now, and we did, but we did get a, a release date for 2023. Not, not an exact date, but at least we're getting it in um, a little over a year or so, almost two years. So I'm excited for this. I love the first game. I love Miles Morales. It is, I think Miles Morales is way better than this, the Spider-Man game, but that's a whole other topic that I won't discuss today. Um, and also in another big, big announcement, we finally got a first look at God of War Ragnarok. This game was speculated on, on, on its release date as, uh, at least. Um, we still don't know when it's actually releasing, but at least we, get, we did get a first look, a very in-depth first look of God of War Ragnarok, which is obviously coming for both the PS4 and the PS5 which brought its on itself a bunch of uh, controversy uh, regarding, you know, there being two versions for two different consoles when we're already on the next-gen console and, you know, this thing not being exclusive to the next-gen console. Is this going to be, like, limiting the power that, that uh, Santa Monica Studios are able to create for the next God of War? I don't know. We'll, be, we'll see. Um, so far, what we see, there's not a, like super amazing or intense graphic um upgrades that you can tell from from this little gameplay uh trailer that they show well not really gameplay trailer but kind of like story trailer um even though it does look like it's in engine um so i I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this next god of war i'm very optimistic that it's going to be great the first the god of war that came out for in 2018 for the ps4 was amazing it's one of the best uh um uh first person rpg games it's it, it, a first person uh single player rpg games and honestly man I, I, it made me a fan of the series I, I didn't have a lot of experience with god of war but this made me a huge fan it made me very interested in the series and honestly the character design the characters actual like development and and person like uh, uh personalities are amazing it's a funny ass game it is it is a very in-depth game and of course if you're into this whole mythology if you're into norse mythology you're gonna enjoy the first game and in this uh, uh collection of, of uh god of war and god of war ragnarok um coming out um but yeah, I'm excited for this. I doubt that it's going to come out this year. I'm sure it's going to come out next year, but it, it looks pretty easy. It looks like it's reaching a point where we can finally start speculating and start uh, uh, getting excited about the release of this game. Um, we also got uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland uh, release date. It's coming out on March 25th. I do not care about the Borderlands games. I'm sorry. I just don't care. But if you're a fan of the Borderlands series, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, which is kind of like a, a spinoff of the Borderlands series, is coming out on March 25th. So you have something to look out for. 
Uh, we also got Forspoken. Um, this game, I think, was one of the first games or kind of like showcase showcases that sony used to kind of really show how powerful the ps5 is um this is a square enix game and of course it looks beautiful it looks amazing oh no it wasn't sony i think it was a uh, uh, they were showcasing it for the unreal engine 5 if i'm not mistaken i would be completely mistaken on that but i remember seeing uh some of this when the ps5 was was wasn't out yet and they were like really really pushing like oh this is the next gen this is the next gen of gaming and they really showed a lot of this game which looks amazing in my opinion this game looks amazing and I, i'm really excited about this game i don't know what the hell is it going to be dealing with i don't know what the the theme is but i'm excited uh we also got news that we're getting an alan wake remaster version um i'm not too big on alan wake i only see just found out that it's a horror game if you're a big Alan Wake, well, we're getting a remaster for the PS5. So there you go. Grand Theft Auto 5, I'm not even going to talk about it because at this point, it's just insulting what Rockstar is doing to us. But we're getting a next-gen remake. I mean, a next-gen version of Grand Theft Auto 5 next year in March. Seriously, man, it's just going to be just port the PS4 version. Like, how many changes can you add to GTA 5, a game that's been out for 2013? You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to talk about it, but... There you go. Ghostwire Tokyo. Don't know much about that. Apparently, Radiohead is partnering with Fortnite uh, developer Epic. Um, here, The Verge reports uh, they're, they're partnering on a project described as an upside-down digital analog universe created from Tom, Tom York and Stanley John Wood's original artwork and audio design by Na Nigel Gottridge. It commemorates the coming of age of Radiohead's records Kid A and Amnesiac. I don't know what to expect from this. If it's anything that what Fortnite did with like the whole ML MLK stuff, I don't care. I don't I don't care about listening to that man. That that MLK thing was weird. Why did they even do that? That is that is the the worst medium to talk about something so serious, you know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I just hope it's, it's nothing like that. Um Uncharted, the two most recent Uncharted games, A Thieves In and Lost Legacy, are being remastered. I've only ever played one Uncharted game for the PS3. It's a great series. It's a great game. I love the gameplay. It's super fun. So I'm excited to finally be able to play at least some Uncharted games on my PS5. Exclusively made for the PS5. Remastered for the PS5 and PC. Which it's not, it's not news that, that Sony is really getting more involved with PC games at least. Um, porting over their games for PC. We're getting Gran Turismo 7, which is coming next March. And another huge announcement was that uh, Insomniac Games, the masters of Marvel games, are working on a Wolverine game. We don't know much about it. We don't know what the hell is going to happen, but at least we're getting a Wolverine game. But that is pretty much the uh, Sony's uh, showcase today from September 9th, 2021. I'm excited for... Uh, um god of war obviously uh, i'm excited for knights of the old republic it is a game that i've been wanting to get into i'm not a big star wars fan but i just i keep hearing great things about this so uh, those are my my so uh, of, of course also marvel spider-man 2 but that's not coming till 2023 so I'll, I'll hold my my hype for that for now but yeah uh, good things coming from sony finally we get some some exclusives for the ps5 man it feels like I've had this damn thing and just sitting there and I've been playing PS4 games on it this whole time. I played like two or three PS5 exclusive games on it. Actually, I've only played one exclusive game for it. No, two exclusive games for it. Miles Morales. No, it's not even exclusive. Miles Morales one is it wasn't exclusive. I think I've only played one exclusive game for the PS5. Jen and Clank. Isn't that crazy? But at least we're getting some new stuff now, finally. Damn. It's, it's been a long time. Um, for our second news item of the week, um, I wanted to touch upon this a little bit because uh, I think it's, it's you know, um, especially, especially with the culture uh, surrounding gaming nowadays, um, I really want to bring light to this and, and kind of keep talking about it and not put it in the back burner. We had this issue with uh, Activision Blizzard with uh, a sexual assault and, you know, just really, really nasty stuff. And then reports from Rockstar just uh, crunching their devs, CD Projekt Red crunching their devs. So I kind of want to keep talking about this because I think 
Um, the industry is at a turning point right now that it's either going to go really good or it's going to keep getting worse. So that's why I want to keep talking about this. And, and this is something that I'm really passionate about. I've always been very passionate about um, uh, just employee rights and, and stuff because uh, I really want people to understand that company's value doesn't lie in the shareholders. It lies in the workers. I'll always say that I'm a big proponent of that. People need to be paid and people need to be treated fairly. Employees need to be treated fairly because the means of production, I'm not going to get too political on you, but there you go. Um, here, Nintendo Live reported that Nintendo changed the culture at Retro Studios following Metro Prime Crunch. Um, thanks to a recent interview on Reese Riley's Kiwi Talks podcast, today has brought some rather interesting details around Retro Studios and Nintendo. Retro Studios, of course, are currently working on the Metro Prime 4, but they are the studio behind a lot of the Metroid series games. If you didn't know by now, which I'm sure you did, but just putting it out there. Uh, Nintendo Live continues to report we have the humorous tale of how the blowing mechanic was added to Donkey Kong Country Returns and some interesting insight into the de development of the Metro Pride Trilogy. These nuggets have been given by Mike Wicken, who used to work at the studio and played a key role in various major projects. Another interesting segment to us was a discussion around crunch at Retro Studios. It's an important topic in the industry, of course, and it's also no secret that extended hours and unreasonable working conditions have been a prominent issue around various companies. Wiccan notably shuts down stories that Nintendo enforced any unreasonable deadlines on the studio for Metro Prime 2 Echoes and highlighted how the company stepped in when it realized there was a serious issue after completion of the first game. The, de the decision to move forward with Echoes in its eventual form was a change of heart from the parent company, though the dark and light mechanic enabled the team to work smartly in user rooms twice, for example. Here he says, after Metro Prime 1, we rarely crunched. We had a change of leadership between 1 and 2. We had some crunch in 2, but it wasn't the 9-month death march that we had at the end of Prime 1. That was the worst. I had two times where I was there 48 hours straight with one hour of sleep, and then a couple of 36-hour days for the last 9 months, we were there pretty much 24-7. At the end of that time, everyone was ready to quit. We were like, we're done. I had two job offers from two different companies, and to their credit, Nintendo realized what was going on and took over the company, bought it out. They put Michael Kelboff in charge. He's a sweetheart, real good. He was head of Nintendo's Q8 department. He said, guys, give me a few weeks to turn around, and he did. He restored faith in leadership and in the company. I loved working for Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo has been known to delay some projects to avoid overworking teams citing a need to care for its employees when it originally pushed back Animal Crossing New Horizons as one example. Metro Prime 4, of course, has no meaningful release with no at this time, so the project's reboot is clearly given plenty of time. I'm all for this. I'm happy to hear this, that at least Nintendo, for all of its faults, is at least sort of... Uh, been a pioneer or at least have been has been a proponent of of just kind of shutting down crunch time um for a lot of these a lot of their studios and for a lot of their games their mainline games especially and with uh just seeing how well animal crossing new horizons turned out i think is a great case study as to how treating your employees right and giving them ample time and treating them fairly can still produce some amazing games and some very successful games as we all know animal crossing new horizons has been nintendo's fastest selling game of all time and hey they didn't have to crunch for it so there you go if, if that doesn't give you a great example of of what you know what things can be achieved without crunching i don't know what will i hope that other developing uh other developers now the video game companies look at this with with you know with with the receptive eyes and and don't put up their defenses and say like oh we just can't have that culture that's japanese culture with at the same time japanese culture has its own faults it is a very workaholic culture and at the same time america is a pretty workaholic culture as well but at least you can finally see that even the big guns such as nintendo kind of value their employees and kind of you know put their employees health in, in the front lines because in essence they are the ones creating the games and they are the ones creating the value behind nintendo so there you go i applaud nintendo for uh identifying the problem and making changes so far back i mean when after metroid prime one released 
that's what early 2000s so i commend them for that and and i'm i'm amazed that this sort of stuff is barely coming out to light you know 20 or so years later but i commend nintendo i can't believe i'm saying that y'all still suck for your hardware support but it is what it is <laughs> for our, our uh, third news item of the week uh, we gotta finally some video, some in-depth video some gameplay video of this great game that I'm so excited about um, I say this unironically it's a goofy ass game, I love goofy games and I'm excited for this I'm excited for the smash killer what I'm gonna call it from now on uh, we got some fighting mechanics for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawls um, some fighting mechanic videos um, of some in-depth uh, mechanics for the uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl game that's coming out this fall. Here Nintendo Live reports, Nintendo Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is expected to arrive next month on the Switch, according to a Nintendo listing. And ahead of release, publisher Game Mail Entertainment has been sharing various video exclusives with IGN. In the latest series of clips, we got a closer look at the game's fighting mechanics, including how damage works and the different types of moves on offer. It's very similar to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, with percentages building up as characters are knocked around the arena. It looks great. Uh, as, as Nintendo Live reported, the percentages work pretty much the same. Even the attacks are pretty much the same. You got special attacks, you got light attacks, you got smash, well, smash attacks, which are, which are just strong attacks. Um, you got recovery. It is a platform uh, fighting game, so it works pretty much the same as uh, Super Smash Bros. does. Um, I think uh, some of the roster got leaked, but for now we do have confirmation that SpongeBob, Patrick Star are going to be part of it. Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles is going to be part of it. April, I don't know who the hell April is. I'm just old as hell. April O'Neil, I've never heard of her. Apparently she's from a cartoon whatever um we also got nigel thornberry from the wild thornberries a great series i might say um we got cat dog and lucy loud for now um here nintendo live reports it's all looking very promising the only complaint from nickelodeon fans so far seems to be that there's no voice work with any luck something like this could be patched in later down the line if there is enough demand for it that that is one thing that i didn't know from the videos that ign put out it felt a little bit empty as far as the uh the sound the sound effects go the sound design um there's no voiceover as nintendo life already reported there's no there's no voice lines when you get hit like the characters are just mute um, you got the music in the background and some sound effects here and there, but that's pretty much it. So I hope, I hope they do add some of that because it adds so much to the game. Um, of course, Smash Bros, like, it just adds a lot of character to, to the actual characters, um, in a fighting game because there's not a lot of character development in fighting games. So, uh, all in all, I'm excited for this game. I will be getting it. I'm going to wait to see how it works on the Switch. If it works well on the Switch and looks fine on the Switch. Um, I get that because I can play. I, I'm expecting to be able to play with my uh, uh, GameCube controller. So if it works pretty much like Super Smash Bros, bro, I'm going to be there kicking 12-year-old butt. Pause. That sounds that sounds really fucked up. But yeah, I'm just going to be online beating kids. That sounds way worse. What am I saying, bro? You know, you, you get the gist. I'm going to be playing online. And I'm going to be ranking up and I'm going to be leaving these kids in the dust. That sounds way better. That sounds a lot more PG. <laughs> but be on the lookout next month for Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl coming out for the Switch and a bunch of other platforms. And for our last news item of the week, this is what I, this is a new section that I'm going to put it at the end of every search and report podcast because I'm not a big fan of rumors. I don't like hyping up rumors because if the Nintendo Switch Pro rumors or anything to go by they almost never amount to anything and whatever they amount to is always disappointing so i'm calling this new section grain of salt section so take this with a grain of salt I'm, i might create a little jingle there um but there's a rumor going around the uh, whole nintendo space whatever you want to call it, the nintendo environment um saying that nintendo will expand its switch online service to include Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles. 
Here at Nintendo Life reports that there's been an update that Eurogamer corroborates the report and claims that other retro platforms are also on the cards. Um, the original story, which was released on Tuesday, 31st of August, um, says next month marks the third year of Switch Online and it seems there's a discussion once again about Nintendo potentially bolstering its paid service with additional retro content. In the latest Nate the Hate podcast, known insider, not insider Nate Drake talks about how Nintendo might be adding Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles in the coming weeks. Again, I am not... I like Nate the Hate. I, I listen to the Spawn uh, Spawncast um, weekly, um, but... He, I take these. I think I take these sort of things with a grain of salt. And uh, if there's anything to go by um, with Nate the Hate speculation as far as Nintendo Switch Pro, of course he did come out and he did clarify that he got new information and everything that he had speculated is wrong. But at the same time, these sort of things I'm going to keep taking with a grain of salt, especially coming from people who have gotten things recently wrong, um, not to their fault. But at the same time, you just can't give your full trust to these sources. Um, here, Nintendo Live continues to report. It all stems from a data mine dating back to 2019, which revealed four emulators inside Nintendo's NES app. While the purpose of the remaining emulators still hasn't been re revealed, both Nate and his co-host MVG believe the third one, Hiyoko, is likely for Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles. Nintendo Life has also confirmed with its own sources that Game Boy and Game Boy Color titles are likely coming to the Switch Online service really soon. The same insider is far less optimistic about Game Boy Advance titles arriving on the paid online service in the near future, noting how several companies are currently working on re-releases, including Nintendo, who has the Advance Wars remaster coming out this December. We've also not heard anything about Game Boy Advance titles being included in this update. Take this with a grain of salt. There's been a bunch of other stories uh, uh, as far as uh, um, data mines um, speculating that there was going to be a Switch Pro coming pretty soon that didn't come to fruition. So even something as involved and as technical as a data mine can speculate you know, can bring about certain speculation uh, surrounding this sort of stuff. Even that, even that, that technical stuff, I, even that I would take with a grain of salt because you never know what Nintendo is doing in the backs, you know, in, in behind the scenes. They might leave these sort of things um, not on purpose. They might just be leftover code of something that they were testing. And of course, data miners don't know that. So they might just take that and run with it. So, for now, it's all a rumor. Um, I hope that they do bring Game Boy titles because the Game Boy is one of my first consoles. In essence, it was one of the first consoles that got me into gaming. So I'd be excited to play some games on there. Um, I'm sure Pokemon is not going to be part of those titles, but it'd it still be fun to speculate and then see what they actually bring about um, for titles for the Game Boy. Um, but my 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 hope is always going to be on Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance has some of the best Game Boy games to date uh, in history. It has one of the best libraries for the Game Boy, um, in my opinion. And I just love that little thing. I have the Game Boy SP, Game Boy Advance SP, but still, I'm still hoping that they release Metro Fusion um, for the Switch in some form or some some fashion, because I don't know. I, I think people need to play Metroid Fusion to really appreciate Metroid Dread before it comes out. But this is Nintendo we're talking about. Whatever. And that's it for this week. Folks, thank you. Thank you for watching this Search and Report podcast. I've been your host, Drew Fernie. If you like this video, if you like this podcast, if you're watching this in the video version over on my YouTube channel, .com, youtube.com slash youferny, please give it a like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video version, give it a thumbs down because every single bit helps. Links to my socials, uh, socials? socials are going to be down in the description below of the video version. Um, you can listen to this uh, podcast alternatively on a, just a straight up audio version over on Spotify. Just search for search and report. We're also on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anywhere and any place that you might listen to your podcast. We're probably there.
you won't miss us. We are Search and Report. We are the only gaming podcast news. Gaming news, bro. Well, I, I get my, my sentences all mixed up. We are the only gaming news podcast out there called Search and Report. Don't listen to the haters. I'm, there's not even a hater out there. I'm just speculating my mind. I got I got imaginary haters in my mind. Um, but please make sure to listen to us on the audio version. Also, make sure to join our Discord server where we talk anything and everything gaming, anime, TV, movies, rumors, anything that might interest you as my viewer, even music. I've been I've been going pretty ham on music right now. Music discussion with a bunch of different releases happening. Shout out to Ye, finally releasing Donda. Shout out to Drake, finally releasing CLB, which was mid as hell. And shout out to uh, Kendrick dropping some stuff with Baby Kim, which is kind of getting me hyped for the next project from Kendrick, bro. But yeah, make sure to join our Discord server. I'm, I'm rambling on right now. Uh, make sure to follow me on Twitter where I where I spend most of my waking hours and where I just tweet out dumbass shit and I tweet out my dumb takes. So make sure to follow me over there on Twitter. Um, also make sure to, uh, follow me and consider subscribing on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash truefernie. As I said, I'm going to try and sprinkle some streams here and there, but do come around. It's always a fun time. I got people that can vouch for that. I think I'm a pretty funny guy. So do come around and watch some of our streams. But folks, I've been True Fernie. Please take care of each other, but most importantly, take care of yourself. Shout out to... GTA 5, man, I don't know, man. Fuck that game. Fuck the game. Alright, peace.